Windows 11 is the new operating system that everyone wants to get their hands on, but they have this weird restriction that prevents you from running it even on a pretty compatible hardware. Because of some mandatory security features that need to be there, even if your hardware has plenty of horsepower, you will be given this message that your PC can't run Windows 11. But in the world of software, if anything else, you know that just because a manufacturer says that it's incompatible doesn't actually mean you can't run it. There are always workarounds to get it working and that's exactly what I did on my 9 year old laptop. Well, it's not perfect, it is still a developer preview or an insider preview as you know, so it still has some optimization issues, but still it's Windows 11 full-fledged and it works perfectly fine for everyday operations. So let me walk you through the things that I did to install this on my laptop here. Now note that we will not be doing the Windows Insider method here, so I'm not gonna even open that program in the settings, instead we'll go the typical ISO route. Now as of this date, Microsoft hasn't officially released the ISO, so we'll have to download it through UUP. Simply head over to UUP dump and you'll find plenty of images uh, which are variations of Windows 11. Select the latest one and click on these options to download it as a file. Now note that this will not download as an ISO file itself, but it will kind of give you an installer from where you can download an ISO directly from Microsoft. Since we selected all the available images, it will take around 12 gigabytes of total download space, so it will take a long time. In my case, it took more than 4 hours, so be patient. It will put the ISO file in the same location where you have extracted this zip file, so make sure that you have plenty of space in that drive. Once you have the ISO, you kind of know what to do. You can create a bootable media using Rufus. You can download Rufus from rufus.ie and flash this ISO onto that drive. And while this is relatively safe, I still recommend you take all the important files off of your drive where you are installing a new operating system, because I don't want you to be stuck with something that you can't boot to anymore and you may not be sure how to get your files back. Now in my case I decided to format my entire drive and install Windows 11 from scratch so for me it was an obvious step to take backup of everything. The SSD where I'm installing this is only 256GB so it didn't take me too long to format that and get it ready for Windows 11. This does require UEFI boot mode so if you're on legacy like I am, go into your BIOS and change that first. Then you can boot into this drive and proceed to install Windows 11. Now before you actually go ahead and start installing, there are two checks that you need to bypass. One is the TPM check and another is the secure boot check. No, you don't have to actually enable secure boot, you can directly bypass it using registry. So simply press shift F10 and that will bring up a command prompt and simply type reg edit to bring up the registry editor. Head over to hkey local machine system and setup and create a new key called lab config. In here you will have to create two D words, one for bypass TPM check and bypass secure boot check and set them both to one. This will actually enable you to bypass them both and proceed to install Windows 11 without any problems. Shout out to LTT for this helpful little tip. I'll leave a link in the description for their video where you can learn a lot more about uh, installing Windows 11 on seemingly incompatible hardware. With these two D words in place, you can now close the registry and proceed with the installation. Everything else here will be very familiar if you have installed say Windows 10 or anything like that. If you are installing it on a particular partition, remember that the partition needs to be GPT and not MBR or anything else. In my case, my entire drive was formatted so I didn't have any problems. Fast forward a few minutes and there we go, we have the Windows 11 installation screen with new animations and everything. Initially it seemed pretty choppy so I was disappointed, I thought that it will not run very well at all, but it eventually became smooth the more I used it. That's what she said. If you don't want to log into your Microsoft account during setup, then consider switching off the internet before you proceed with it. But you can always unplug your account from Microsoft when you want later down the line, so I'll just continue with logging in as of now. If you're on an older machine like I am, it'll take a while for Windows to recognize the graphics and display drivers, so your display brightness may be stuck for a while, so be patient. For me, it took around 15 minutes before the display control started working. Now that we have a developer preview of the Windows 11 installed, let's explore the UI and see what we see. Now I know for a fact that a lot of people didn't like these new icon packs when they first saw it on Windows 11. I think that they look quite elegant and it's a nice change from what we saw with Windows 10. I'm definitely appreciating the faster responsiveness of the file explorer, it doesn't take as much time now to search for files and stuff. Although this new right click context menu will definitely take some time to get used to, so if you want the older menu you'll have to click on show more options to get to that. But the quick options that you would typically use like cut, copy and paste are all tiny icons now on the top itself, so that's pretty cool. But now that we have a desktop setup, I noticed a weird bug where I couldn't type anything here on the search bar or uh, even in the settings menu for that matter, but the keyboard worked just fine in applications like this or notepad or whatever else. So it turns out Microsoft in their infinite wisdom forgot to add a keyboard scheduler which I managed to fix. You see if you open computer management by right clicking on your windows icon and go down to task scheduler and open Microsoft uh, Windows and go down all the way up to something that says 
uh, here it is text service framework so initially this was blank where this scheduler was completely missing from there so this scheduler basically runs from start to finish of a session and it allows you to type on windows specific applications like the start lock screen and things like that so there's an easy way to add this in and i created a handy little xml which is basically an export from uh, another system that i had so download this from the link in the description go to the same framework folder and right click on it to import it all you have to do is point to the same xml and it will be imported automatically with all the settings that you need just make sure that the status says ready and then close everything restart your system and you'll be good to go it's kind of funny that microsoft even missed it to begin with because that scheduler is the same ever since the days of windows 7 so if you open a windows 7 system that scheduler will be exactly what you see here I don't know how they missed it with their latest and greatest highly secure Windows 11. Another extremely annoying bug is this right click issue. Like if you, when you right click, if, even if you move the mouse a little bit, the right click window sometimes just disappears. So interestingly, when you press the right click button on your keyboard, it automatically opens the older context menu. Like it doesn't even show you the new one. So yeah, start using the keyboard's right click if you have an external keyboard or if you have that option on your laptop. If not, you're, you're stuck with this, uh, this annoying finicky little thing until they fix it with the full version. Now general performance has been okay but it's not stellar. It's definitely not as smooth as Windows 10 mainly because this is still a preview. It's not a final build. I know for a fact that it's not bottlenecked by the hardware because it barely seems to be using any resources at all. So it obviously boils down to the lack of optimization which will come out once the official build is released. Until then, enjoy the cool new multi-window features and the new slick UI. I'll be sure to make another tutorial video on installing the final build version once it is released, so be sure to subscribe for that. And while you're down there, let me know what you think of the new Windows 11. Are you gonna try it out for yourself or do you already have it? Are you using it now? Let's have a chat down there. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.